And you're listening to the Podcast Detroit Network. Visit www.podcastdetroit.com for more information. In this episode of the Motor City Hypnotist Podcast, uh, we're going to have a little bit of, well, I, I call it fun. It could be fun for some of us, but I'm going to talk about top 10 movies that make men cry. Now, I'm not trying to be cruel or mean. I'm just saying that uh, men sometimes have a hard time expressing emotions, and sometimes uh, sometimes a sad movie can help you do that. Mm. And I'm also going to be giving away a free hypnosis guide. Stay tuned. I don't want to go. Get ready for the Motor City Hypnotist, David R. Wright, originating from the suburbs of Detroit, Michigan. He has hypnotized thousands of people from all over the United States. David R. Wright has been featured on news outlets all across the country and is the clinical director of an outpatient mental health and hypnosis clinic located just south of Detroit, where he helps people daily using the power of hypnosis. Welcome, the Motor City Hypnotist, David R. Wright. What is going on, people? It's David Wright, back with another episode of the Motor City Hypnotist Podcast. Rock on. We are here in the Podcast Detroit Northville Studios. In the booth with me is Matt Fox. Hey, you know, um, running all my stuff. And I got my tissues ready. <laughs> just letting <laughs> you, you know. You, just make sure you have a full box. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can I try it really quick? <laughs> Clean out your desk. You're gone. <laughs> so, um, let's start with. Um, you know, we're, we're just so the subject. I know you heard it in the pre-introduction here, but yeah, we're going to be talking about sad movies that make men cry. So hang in there; it's going to be fun. <laughs> Let me tell you where to find me. You can find me at MotorCityHypnotist.com, and on my website, you'll find my podcast blog page where you can find all of the shows, all of our show notes, all of the links for all of the things that I, that I mentioned during the shows. And you can also follow me on social media, on Facebook, YouTube, at Motor City Hypnotist, on Twitter, at Motor City Hypno, and also on Instagram, Motor City Hypno. And also, if you would like to contribute financially to the show, you can find me on Patreon, under Motor City Hypnotist. And um, again, on Patreon, if a small donation per month that helps the show out and you get cool stuff like this T-shirt, which I did have on last show, but but just, just for people who may say, is he wearing the same shirt over and over again? We're just recording back to back. So yeah, don't... Uh... Hey, nice clothes, gentlemen. I didn't know the Salvation Army was having a sale. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I didn't wear the same shirt for a week. And... As usual, I'm giving away a free hypnosis guide, as I do every show. That link will be in the show notes. And again, the most important thing I would like to say is wherever you're listening, whether it be iTunes, uh, Spotify, wherever, uh, just subscribe to the show and leave a review because that really helps me out. It helps me uh, kind of gauge how things are going, what you want to hear. Um, and again, hopefully bringing you good content that you enjoy and can ben benefit from. Hmm. And finally... Please join me each week as I co-host the Psyched by MG podcast with my friend Mary Grace, where we also cover mental health issues. And in fact, again, if you're on Facebook Live right now, uh, we are going to be on Facebook Live at about 6.30 Eastern time, and we're going to be having a special guest on Psyched by MG, a woman who specializes in the hookup culture for young people, which will be uh, an interesting one, to say the least. Yes. So stay tuned for that if you'd like. This episode of the Motor City Hypnotist podcast is brought to you by Banner Season. Online marketing is saturated and people rarely open their emails. Are you in sales or does your business market to customers? How do you connect with family, friends, and clients? Banner Season takes your marketing into the real world by delivering kindness and thoughtfulness directly to your clients physically. Imagine the excitement of your family, friends, and customers as they receive personalized cards and gifts in their mailboxes. Go to bannerseason.com forward slash fantastic and begin today to express kindness and make connections with others. Again, that is bannerseason.com forward slash fantastic. 
and we'll thank them. And again, just as a disclaimer, I am an affiliate for this this uh, business, for this product. Um, doesn't cost you anything extra, but uh, again, just to be totally transparent, I do get make a little bit of money if you use them. Uh, but again, it's a great service. I use it for um, all of my must-remember <laughs> events like birthdays and anniversaries and things of such. That Dave is such a nice guy. He always yeah. remembers my anniversary. And it always comes in a box with like like <laughs> like um, custom printing on it. It's all oh personalized. He's such an amazing guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm very important. So, <laughs> so yeah, take a check or check that out. Take a look at that. So it is time. One of our favorite things of the week. how winning is done it is winner of the week time you know it seems like um I've, I've had a theme the last couple of shows it seems to be focused on dogs for some reason yeah well the last one the, the last two, one the, was yeah, yeah the two uh young gentlemen that saved yep. the uh, dog mm-hmm. that was uh, trapped in a cave yep so this is this is a cool story um this this week's winner of the week is mina kumar so let, let me tell you, quickly give you a background on her. Mina Kumar, at nine months old, was found abandoned in a basket on a college campus in, in Pune, India. Okay. After spending a year in an orphanage, she was adopted by a couple in Mumbai and brought to San Jose, California. In, while she was in Mumbai, Mina would watch over litters of puppies at her home. When she came to the United States... Almost every weekend included a trip to the Humane Society or to Muttville Senior Dog Rescue. That's, <laughs> it's that's, called that's brilliant. Muttville. That's brilliant. <laughs> what the fuck are you <laughs> no, doing? It is. It's, it's called Muttville. So Muttville is a shelter specifically for senior citizen dogs. That's brilliant. Like senior dogs. Yeah. Muttville is a cage-free dog rescue that gives senior dogs a second chance at life, according to their website. The organization was founded in 2016 by Sherry Franklin and rescues about 1,000 dogs per year and runs mostly with the help of volunteers. So Mina first heard of this rescue from a neighbor whose dog had been adopted from Muttville. The neighbor shared stories of how senior dogs are often left behind in shelters. With tender love and care, those dogs can make great companions. So what Mina did was she wanted to help, but unfortunately, she's only 12. Uh-huh. And she has to be 17, year old, 17 years old to volunteer at Muttville. So she started a pet sitting, facility, pet sitting service at her own home okay. called Pet Fairy Services and has raised $7,000 for Muttville. What a she's gr- she's worked to make the money to give to Muttville. Kid, you know, children these days I, I they, know. They it, they get something in their brain and they just stick with it. And it just yeah, and this is a prime example. It really is. Yeah, it, it's somebody amazing. who's 12 years old raised $7,000 for Muttville. And she was she was 9 years old when she was found. Yeah, you said she was, a, she was an infant. Oh, an infant. I said she was nine for some reason. That's what I thought I heard. Oh no, nine months old. Nine months old. Okay. Nine months old. Yes, okay. I'm sorry. Nine months old. She was found abandoned. Oh wow. Yeah, that is that. That's phenomenal. Yeah. So she she raised seven thousand dollars for Mutt. Now I want to look. I'm going to look up Muttville online because it, it's. I I just there's just little tinge of sadness which will lead into our our subject for today. <laughs> but that people would abandon older dogs. Yeah. Yeah, that, like sometimes when you get a puppy and you can't handle them or they get rambunctious or whatever, you might give them mm-hmm. back. But to have a dog for eight, nine years and then just give them back. Mm-hmm. One of the other shows on the network, Animal Talk. Oh, Animal Talk, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. so that, that is that is a, a company that we would love to, that they would love to talk to as well. Ooh, I'm, part yeah. of the, I'm part of the Animal Talk. Oh, but perfect. Yeah, we'd love to talk to them just to understand what they do to help these senior animals. Right. It's right. awesome. Because, I mean, and, and think of it, senior dogs have been with people probably for years, and mm-hmm. all of a sudden they're just in the shelter. Yeah. I mean, wow, what, what a trauma to them. Wow. So anyway. Well done. Big shout out to... Mina Kumar, you are the winner of the week. That's how winning is done. That is. That's definitely how winning is done, Mina. Yes, absolutely. Good job. And, and I, I have to say, I am partial to dogs. I'm not a cat fan, but... Um, <laughs> 
nothing against cats or people who have them. I mm-hmm. just, I've always grown up with a dog and, you know. Same. You know, I, I've had animals around us in our household mm-hmm. pretty much my entire life. Yeah. From cats to dogs to right. birds to hamsters, rodents, right? Yeah. Uh, we have a cat right now. Mm-hmm. She is a tiny dog. Oh, okay. she does play fetch. Oh, good. So. Okay, so she has some dog characteristics. She does. She yeah. does. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> so our topic today, I, I, and I say this in a little bit in jest, but a little seriousness. It's, it, it's going to be a little bit fun, but these are top 10 movies that make men cry. Now, I, I'm, I'm picking on men a little bit because let's, let's face it, in general, in my therapy practice, which I've been working at for 30 years, and again, I'll make a general statement. It's not a blanket. It doesn't apply to everyone. Men, men are a little bit less apt to express their feelings. Let's say that. And that, that's just a common you don't, fact. You really don't know me, do you? <laughs> <laughs> they're just, again, they're just a little less less open. And, and, and they're, they don't like to show their feelings, okay. especially sadness or crying. or Because, again, sometimes they think it's a weakness in some way. Stop it. Yeah, I know. I know. So... <laughs> But but there are movies that really and, and and the reason I bring this up is that it's good to cry sometimes. And I'm coming at this from from a from a therapeutic approach as far as having some fun with it. But a lot of times I, I, I say this to clients that they'll say to me, Well, yeah, I just felt like crying all night. And I'm like, do it. Just just let it out. Yeah. Just just let let the feeling that you're having out and and, and it will purge yourself and you'll feel better. So, so yeah, for, for a lot of men, they hold that in. So, so I'm going to, I'm going to get some, I'm going to make some of you cry with, if, if you watch some of these movies, that's what, that's what my goal is. So number 10 on our list, and we, we just got done talking about dogs. Mm-hmm. Number 10 on the list is Marley and you me. Asshole. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> yeah, that, that one. Yeah, that was a tough one. And and disclaimer ahead of time, uh, spoiler alert: uh, if you've not seen any of these movies, um, I, I I don't think any of them are recent or new. So if you haven't, you should have by now. Yeah. So I, I've seen that. I've seen Marley and Me uh-huh. one time, and yep. I will not watch it ever again. There's a reason for that. <laughs> well, and and let me tell you when you will. I'll even give you the when you'll start crying in this movie. <laughs> An aging Marley suffering from arthritis and deafness nearly dies but makes a recovery. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then when you'll totally lose it is when he reaches the point where surgery can no longer help him. Yeah, I know. I need to walk. I need to take a walk. <laughs> yeah, you could, you could take a break, man, if you want. Uh, there, there, there's a backstory to that uh, for me personally with that movie. I've oh, only seen okay. it one time. Right. I will never see it again. Right. Because I was a blubbering idiot. Yeah. Oh, I was too. I, 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 and I, and I can tell you, in every every movie I'm telling you or, or mentioning today, I I cried out. I at, cried out loud. It oh. wasn't like I just had a tear. Mm-hmm. It, it, they were they, they were very tough. All right, here we go. Okay, here we go. Let's, let's start it off strong. Everybody, get ready. We're gonna have some fun. Start it off strong. Here we go. <gasps> oh, great, Odin's Raven. Anchorman is not on the list. <laughs> Number nine. Of, of movies that will make men cry is E.T. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> E.T. And, and I know it's it's an older movie. I mean, it, it's, uh, you know, a Spielberg, you know. It's very Spielberg. Yeah, man. very yeah. Spielberg-ish. Uh, and again, if you have not seen E.T., come on. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> what do you do with uh, your life? <laughs> yeah, I mean. But if you've not seen E.T., you need to see E.T. Yes. For sure. Um, and I, I, I don't even have to tell you, because if you've seen it, you know when, when, what the saddest part is, when, when they're both become ill and mm-hmm. then E.T. has to, you know. Well, there's two parts. When he, when he actually dies, quote unquote, and right. then when he has to say goodbye Bye. when he leaves. Yeah. Yeah. So E.T. is like, uh, yeah. 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 Why so serious? <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it's it's a bit serious. And that was I, I think I saw ET when I was probably I, I had to be I was a kid or a teenager yeah. at least. I know I was young because it came out in the eighties. I was eight years old. Okay. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Number eight. We'll move on here. Uh, okay. we'll, we'll move on here trying to make men cry. <laughs> <laughs> what in blazes are you talking about? No, I know it's crazy. Um. Number eight is Philadelphia. Oh, yes. 
Yeah. Tom Hanks, Denzel Tom Washington. Tom Hanks, Denzel Washington. Yes. And, and it's the whole progression of, of Denzel being very homophobic mm -hmm. and, and very, I, I really just, just kind of um, being a dick. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and they just come to be friends. And again, I, I, if, if you've seen the movie, you know exactly what, what happens. Joe visits a dying Andrew in the hospital to tell him that the jury has ruled in his favor, that once he was afraid to get near him, he touches his face. That was one. Hmm. Then, of course, when Andrew tells his boyfriend, Antonio Banderas, that he's ready to die and then does so shortly thereafter. Right. Yeah. And, and a great a great movie regarding, um, in general, regarding homophobia and gay rights yes. and, and the, societal the sadness side. Of, yeah. of AIDS and, and things that happen. It, it's, it's, it's really a fantastic movie. Yeah. Uh, and again, if you've not seen that, you should. If you've not seen any of these, you probably should. But, you know, if you want to do it by yourself in your own room. <laughs> Have tissues. So nobody's around. Yeah. <laughs> Great heavens. What kind of radio show is this? <laughs> so we're, we're, I got a couple of, couple of, like, couple of older ones. And number seven is one of those older ones. Old Yeller. Come back, Yeller. <laughs> <laughs> it's very old. Um, it was made in... Oh, I didn't put down when it was made. Ah, I got you. It was it had to be late sixties, early seventies. That was nineteen fifty seven. Oh, it was that early. Yes, okay, nineteen fifty seven. Okay. So, and again, if if you're not familiar with old movies or you don't know Old Yeller, some of, some of you millennials might have any, any idea who Old Yeller is, um, and that's fine. Oh, good for you. So it's really about it. It's it's it, the movie set in the eighteen sixties. There's this kid. Who, who has this bond with his dog, a lab, a Labrador lab. retriever yep. named Old Yeller. Um, and he gets bitten by a wolf while defending his family. Mm -hmm. And the dog survives, but unfortunately he gets rabies. Right. And ends up getting rabid. Mm -hmm. And then he has, he's, the kid, Travis, is forced to shoot and kill his own dog. Right. At the end. Spoiler alert. Yeah, spoiler alert. But again, <laughs> if you haven't seen it, where are you? I don't know what we're yelling about. <laughs> that, that's one. That's one. Yeah. I mean, again, it was. Uh, I, I. I probably the last time I probably saw that I was a teenager. So it's been a long time. It's been a real hot I second. Even for turn me that too. one on. Okay, we'll keep going. <laughs> yeah. If you guys have, uh, make sure you still have your tissues out, and uh, well, we'll keep moving on this. Um, number six. That was seven, I think. Wasn't yes, it? Yes, I made sure I numbered it right. I had a list before I had. I had misnumbered. <laughs> number six. Uh, Rain Man. Good. That's a really good selection. And and I was I was doing research for this and looking just again just looking on lists of of sad movies and I wanted to make sure it was kind of more geared towards men because and and I'm sorry ladies and females out there I I, I kind of avoided love stories per se okay or or you know you know typical chick flicks like Titanic was on many of these lists I would imagine and I thought. Mm, not so much for me. Right. Yeah. I, didn't, I knew how it was going to end. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, the best part of that movie was just seeing the destruction. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as far as the effects That's... and because, you, like I said, you knew it was coming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was. It was. <laughs> but yeah, number six is Rain Man. And again, if you don't know the story, Dustin Hoffman plays an autistic guy, that... adult, and he meets a brother who he never knew he had. And Tom Cruise plays the older brother. Who he never knew, or actually, younger brother. Rain Man is older. Yeah. Yes, Tom Cruise is the younger brother, and he never knew he had a brother. De definitely, his, his dad brother. died. Definitely, definitely, De his younger definitely, brother. Definitely, yes. definitely, <laughs> definitely not gonna have pancakes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it ends up Tom Cruise wants to take his brother because he wants money. He wants his dad's inheritance. Uh huh. And the the whole, of course, over time, he comes to learn and love the brother mm -hmm. but of course he's he's he doesn't know how to handle his behaviors right. he doesn't know how to get him and again the part that you'll cry at is when he has to put him on the train at the end and you yeah. know tell him goodbye yeah. so that one yeah that's a tough one that is, that is a tough movie to watch but there are some really endearing brother to brother oh, moments yeah. in there as and, well and again fantastic yes. acting in that movie yeah uh, especially by dustin hoffman yeah um 
And for those of you who, who again, I, I hope you have seen this. If you haven't, it's. Uh, I think he was. I, I'm sure he was up for an Oscar for that. Mm. I, I, I'm almost sure that that was the case. But and again, number five. We're halfway through. Yeah. I'm going to check my time here to make sure we don't. I don't want. To, I don't want to cut you off hanging and not give you the number one. Uh, you you got plenty of yeah, time. Yeah, I do. Number five. This was a TV movie. It was never released th- theatrically. Okay. And it was released in 1971. All right. And it was about football. Do you know where I'm going with this? I think so. Uh Uh-huh. Longest something? No. No? Brian Song. Oh, yeah. Why why was I thinking Longest Yard Prison Football? Uh, Ah, yeah. Well, that was the the Burt Reynolds film. Right, right. But you you went Brian Song. Brian Song. Ah, okay. And Brian Song, if you guys don't know, is it tells the story of of, uh, Gail Sayers. Uh, this is it's it's based on a real story, of course. Gail Sayers and Brian Piccolo, mm-hmm. they're both football players, and they meet in college, I believe. You know, I might not, I might have that wrong, but it's okay. But the, but he ends up that that Brian Piccolo, who is white, and Gail Sayers, who is black. Mm-hmm. Brian Piccolo wants to room with them, right? And, and they become closest of friends and they're both and the thing is they're both have the same position they're both running backs so they're kind of competing for this for this position huh and but they become best friends and um he brian piccolo ends up getting cancer right yes that i do remember and and the the actors in this james con was brian piccolo and billy d williams played gail sayers yep and there's a there's a, a a speech at the end of it that after his death, that's hmm. just yeah that'll that'll knock you out. Yeah. Especially if you're if you're a sports fan and and really again based on the true story of Gail Sayers and Brian Piccolo. Wow. So yeah, that's number five. Halfway through, I'm, yep. ha- I'm Halfway hanging through. tough, yep. man. I really yep. <laughs> I, I don't see any tissues out yet. <laughs> we can make an excuse. It's quite pungent. It stings the nostrils. <laughs> good okay number four we're getting there this is other than being sad it's one of my favorite movies of all time one flew over the cuckoo's nest well that's an old that's an older flick yeah Mm -hmm. that's uh jack nicholson jack nicholson yeah and again for those of you don't know jack nicholson is committed to a what they called then an insane asylum right it's a mental hospital um which is in his ward is run by nurse ratchet which, off topic, just go off topic. Yeah. The, the fuck are you <laughs> Give me a minute. doing? All right. There's a Netflix show coming out in the fall called Ratchet. Okay. And it's based on her character and the woman from American Horror Story. Um, why can't I think of actresses' names? Um, I know exactly who you're talking is, about. Is playing her, playing Nurse Ratchet in this series that's coming out on Netflix coming up in the fall. Very reminiscent of American Horror Story, if you look at the trailer. Okay. It's pa- Paula... Um, Sarah, Sarah Paulson? Sarah Paulson. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Plays Nurse Ratchet. Wow. I was like, I was thinking it may have been Jessica Lange that was right. going to play yeah. uh, Nurse yeah. Ratchet, but so again, one floor of the cuckoo's nest. Jack Nicholson he gets admitted to this hospital and he he shakes things up. You know, all of it's it's a very cool story because he he starts you know playing games with all the guys and and befriending them and he, he takes he he sneaks them all out of the hospital and takes them out on this charter boat and <laughs> and so he's he's causing trouble. I mean, he's raising. Really, he's raising hell in the ward right. because they, they want these people calm and sedated, and, and he's making them live right. is what he's doing. And, of course, again, spoiler alert, just turn your volume down for a moment. <laughs> they end up lobotomizing Jack Nicholson at yeah, the end. they do. And um, the character who plays Chief, uh, the tall Native American guy, uh, ends up smothering him before he escapes out, out the window. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's like, I'll be back. Stop it. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, again, but a great movie. Again, great acting. A lot of great, you'll, you'll be surprised. Well, not maybe not surprised. Um, uh, Christopher Lloyd was in that movie. So was Danny DeVito. 
So was uh, there was another major actor that played one of the patients. Really? And the whole poker scene is fantastic. Because Danny DeVito breaks a cigarette in half and he goes, I bet a nickel. <laughs> and Nicholson's like, you can't bet a nickel. This is a dime. You break it in half, you don't have anything. That's not a nickel. <laughs> yeah. G- great scene. It's probably not exactly like that. I'm sure I'm paraphrasing or messing yeah. that up. Christopher Lloyd. Uh, Sydney. Danny DeVito. Um, Vincent uh, Chevelli is in there as well. Mm-hmm. Wow. Look at these names that are in this movie. Wow. Yeah, something to definitely check out. Yeah, and absolutely. Re- and go back to and, and watch again. Yes, ab- absolutely. Um, That's great. Number three. We're getting close here to number yeah. one. I, I think this came up a couple of times. I don't. It came up in one of one of our podcasts not long ago. Okay. Dead Poet Society. Yes, yeah, so it was just in uh, the right. two episodes ago. I think is what right. it was. Yeah, fantastic story. Fantastic I, I, movie. One of my favorite movies of all time. Again, in my top ten of all time. Yeah. And again, it's about an English teacher, John Keating, who plays played by Robin Williams. Mm-hmm. He he comes into this boarding school. Which he was a student at himself. Yes, which he was a student at himself. And and he plays this teacher who who tries to inspire his students. And and really the the whole lesson of it, it and and this is a it's it's a great movie as far as lessons in life too. Not to do something, to fall not to follow the crowd, to be your own person, to to have dreams mm-hmm. and chase those dreams and do things different. And so he inspired this whole class. And of course, unfortunately, one of the students um, ends up committing suicide and he's of course fired. Yeah. But again, the, 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 the part that will have you have you crying is at the end when all of the students defy the headmaster yeah. and stand on their desks. Oh, while captain, he's walking out. my captain, oh, captain, my captain. <laughs> and the, and the soundtrack to that, the music at the end of that, mm-hmm. it just, if you, if you don't cry to that, you're, you're dead. Mm. Yeah. You're dead inside if you're you dead don't. inside. <laughs> Do you have a brain like a chicken? <laughs> Cuz that yeah, that one gets me every time. Yeah. Okay, we're close here. Number 2. Number 2. All right. The Green Mile. <laughs> you're such an Oh. <laughs> you're killing me, Smalls. <laughs> I, I I love Stephen King. This is one of the best movie adaptations they've ever done from his books. Yes, agreed. 100%. The, the casting was right on. And unfortunately, Michael Clark Duncan had pa- has passed away. But mm-hmm. that was a fantastic movie from beginning to end. And, of course, we know, long story short, John Coffey, who's the, who's the inmate, mm-hmm. Michael Clark Duncan, has these these uh, uh, abilities, these... these uh, I say supernatural healing powers, supernatural, supernatural he- healing powers. Yeah. And they think he killed these two girls, but he was trying to save them. Mm-hmm. And he ends up being put on death row. And, and the whole story is, it's just there's so many side characters, a, gr- a, lot, a lot of great people in that movie too. Tom Hanks yes. and a, a bunch of other people. But of course he's, he has to be executed at the end. Mm-hmm. And, and the whole, the whole, the whole internal conflict with Tom Hanks having to let it happen. Right. And, 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 John Coffey, the character saying he, he just he's done. He's ready to be done. Right. Yeah. The, that one and then and that twist. The first time you watch it, that twist mm-hmm. at the at the end, you're like, Well shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's 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 a great, great movie. And again, as far as Stephen King adaptations, one of the best. Mm-hmm. All right. We're at number one. All right, bring any, it. Any guesses? Any guess there I cry a lot, just so uh, you know. Well, but, but this this one I do every time. All right. I've probably seen it a hundred times. Go for it. Field of Dreams. Yeah. Uh yeah. I, I've shed a few. Uh-huh. <laughs> over that one. One of the best baseball movies. <laughs> one of the best baseball movies, father son moments. Yes. And it it's just nostalgic. It's about baseball. It's 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 uh you know, I, I the, the whole story, I mean I mean, James Earl Jones is in it. Yeah. It's, it's the whole thing is just a I just a masterpiece of a movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and if, if, if you, well, I shouldn't say if you've had it, everybody has a dad, but when it gets to the end and mm-hmm. he starts playing catch with his dad, yeah. it's over yeah. just every time. If you build it, yeah. they will come. Yep. <laughs> and, and he did. Yeah. And it's, it's just, again, one of my favorite movies of all time that yeah. would be on my top 10 list as well. So well, yeah, this is our top 10 movies that will make men cry. Round of go. applause. We got through it. Honestly, round of no, applause. No tissues out yet. Now I see. Now I have to go and watch all these movies now. Right, but you might want to do them separate. You don't want to do it all, 
all at once. Oh, well, I, might, I might as well. <laughs> <laughs> just <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> you know, might as well get the cry over with all at once. Honestly, you know? yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, that is our ten movies. So so again, I I I know we had fun with this, and and again, these are serious movies, and they are sad. But mm-hmm. but again, I want to ex- I want to emphasize that that men, you can you can let your emotions out, you can show how you feel. It's not a sign of weakness. In fact, it's a sign of strength to show that you can feel and and let your emotions out. So if you feel like you need to cry, throw one of these movies on. Mm-hmm. Just be by yourself in your room. Yeah. Just let it out, and, and um, you'll feel better for it. So that is it. So I am going to, I'm working on a guest for next episode. So I'm not going to give you the, the we're not going to tease that yet because I'm not sure it's going to happen. Um, but it could be something really cool. So tune in for next episode. Uh, it, there might be a guest. If not, we're going to do something that that's, again, useful and something that you can take away and, and use for yourself. Thanks, man. All right. So thank you, everybody, for being here. Hopefully you didn't cry too much. <laughs> change your thinking. Change your life. Laugh hard. Run fast and be kind. I'll see you soon. <laughs>